imagine being the go-to notary in your area with people wrapped around the corner and your phone is just ringing off the hook with people begging you to take their money. Well, today's episode, we're going to be discussing the five power moves that's going to take your business to the next level for you to dominate the competition and make the money that you deserve. Stay tuned. Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hitman, your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard? I am joined by the team, y'all. Y'all see the team. What's up? Got my, got my brother out there in Oakland, California, Tekamaku. Shout out to Tech. What up, Tech? Hey, what's up, man? You see, I got the handcuffs on today. What the hell you got handcuffs on, bro? Because <laughs> we're going to unhandcuff. Some people today are going to let them know how to take off the chains so that they oh, can wow. free themselves. <laughs> that, that, that's they very animated, them. brother. You you, you the bust the rhymes in this joint. <laughs> <laughs> and we have our, our beautiful Dawn Velez out there in Florida. How are you today, Dawn? I am doing wonderful, trying to stay warm. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's warmer out there than here in Chicago. I agree. Um, uh, <laughs> we we are at a wind chill of four, 14 below. Oh. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm at 45. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you won. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's ridiculous. They actually canceled school because it was so cold oh, yesterday. Geez. So, wow. yeah, that, hmm. that's how serious it is. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be talking about uh, how notaries can stand out in this competitive industry. And I guess it would be competitive if you view it that way. But I put competitive just, you know, just for uh, competitive sake, I guess. And uh, I'd like to start somewhere. Right. Um, I actually have the the cues and slides ready. Shout out to LaShonda. How you doing, LaShonda, out there in Jersey? She says, good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. Always a pleasure. We're going to be having LaShonda on uh, the Notary War Room. Hey. Uh, you're going to be Let's a guest. Go. So I'm excited about that. Uh-oh, we got Natural Jesse. Is that Jazzy? Is that Jazzy? <laughs> Jazzy, is that you? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Natural Jesse, hello. Hello, all. So, yeah, we, we're going to get a crack. And how can we stand out um, in this notary industry? So let me start off with this first slide. And then you guys can go ahead and elaborate and tell me what you think about this, right? First slide. Build your personal brand. In a world full of notaries, we need to stand out, build a personal brand that reflects trust, reliability, and professionalism. What say you? Let's start, ladies first. What do you say about that, Dawn? Build in a personal brand. I think it's important to build a personal brand. You you have to present yourself a certain way, and it should be, of course, professional. Um, it's. I'll I'll speak from how I run Notary Nation. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't look left or right. I, I literally have blinders on and I just focus on trying to make my brand better. So to me, having the basics such as your hex codes, you'd be surprised how many people don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. um, having a standard um, package, everything matching across the board um, from there in terms of like marketing and different things like that. Um, and just keeping everything kind of cohesive um, just to make yourself look professional. And then after that, the rest is pretty much up to you and how you carry yourself and how you present yourself out there in the field. Do you think uh, having a personal brand in the notary industry is important? I mean, it's important for business, period. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, a lot of people don't set their, their notary business up as an actual business, even if they go and get their LLC or whatever they're going to file as. Um, they don't use payment processors. They don't have like professional things in place. Um, okay. they don't have a, an SOP in place. It's not being ran. Like, it's just like, if I get a call, I may answer the phone. I may not. If I get a call, I may take the job. I may not. Um, and I think that's because it's more, and this is not, of course, this is not everyone. I'm just speaking for the ones that it applies to. And, um, in those scenarios, <clears throat> it's more of like a side hustle versus their actual, you know, income full time. And so, I think it's important, yes, that you have a brand, that you're consistent across your brand, um, but you are the brand. So your level of professionalism, how you carry yourself in different areas, things like that is what matters. What say you, Tech? For notaries, specifically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we are in the notary war room, or we, you know, Uh we're not in the war room, but... (laughs) Well, well, the profits are up live. Profits are up. <laughs> Give us us free. Tech. No, that Give is wild, free. dude. This dude, <laughs> this dude got handcuffs. Like, yeah, you took it to a whole nother level, brother. So, because notaries are handcuffing themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, speak on that. How, how are they handcuffing themselves? If I call five people... And by the way, I am a notary for the record, so I know what a quality notary looks like. I know what I'm looking for <clears throat> because we're talking about personal brand, aren't we? If I'm going to send out business and I wouldn't show up like that, then I don't want this person to reflect negatively what my business looks like. So, for example, There's somebody who calls from the train station and they need a notary because they're getting ready to go out of town. Or you have a professional like a carpenter, somebody who's an executive in their union, and they want you to travel to their location. On one hand, the person at the train station may be pressed for time. It's urgent. I need to leave right now, and I need someone to come right now. And then you tell them that it costs $100. And then they, the first thing that they say is, oh, I can't pay $100. I don't want to, it's not that important anymore. Mm-hmm. In contrast, you have the person who's an executive at the carpenters union. You tell them, same scenario. We need you to come right now. Can you please show up? We have an executive and he needs to sign a, a proof of life form, a declaration of identity, whatever it is. All right, this is not real estate related stuff. And then... You tell them it's $170, and then they say, okay, can you come here in 15 minutes or 30 minutes? These are completely different. See, these scenarios, no matter what the customer is looking for, at the end of the day, they only need one thing, which is a signature and a stamp. You have a commission, presumably. You can help them. Uncuff yourself. Take the handcuffs off. Help the person with exactly with what they need. And if that's your brand, if that's the message I want to send, if that's the impression that I'm giving that this is, you call us and we come. That's the brand. You want us to come in 10 minutes, we'll be there in 10 minutes. You want us to be there tomorrow at Thursday at 3.15, then we can come tomorrow at 3.15. And that's what we stand on. That's the brand. That's the message that gets delivered every time there's an interaction with a customer. So, if so, that's my brand right there. My brand is you call us, we come, and people are looking for that. That's reliability, that's confirmation, that's what customers are looking for, and that's the reason why it's easy to sell. You know, all the product knowledge in the world means nothing if you can't sell it. And for notaries, you can be as smart, you can be as professional, and you have all the experience in the world, but if you can't sell it, you don't know how to convey your brand's message, which is for us, is we're available (laughs) when you need us. That's, we send that message through every communication. If you can't convert, if you can't convey that message, you can't send that message from your brand to your customer or to your potential customer, then you'll be handcuffed. So you gotta take off the handcuffs. So let me let me ask you this: Would that fall more under your company brand, or would that be more of the personal brand? Yeah, 
Yeah, that is a company brand. It's a company brand. But the company is, you know, takes up after my personality. Mm, okay. I like that. In keeping with that, I like that too. Um, in keeping with that too, um, the handcuffs too are on the mind. And because you can't see past your own limits or you're, you're putting your own, you can't take the shackles off of your mind. You can't enhance your thinking. You can't learn something new. You can't take chances or take risks. And I feel like they're definitely handcuffing themselves when it comes to that side as well. Um, even especially when it comes to pricing. Um, I actually literally told one notary, you know, cause she was so hell bent on, well, Florida charges $10. You can't pay more than $10. And I was just flat out like, I don't work for the state of Florida. I work for myself. So mm -hmm. that $10 is definitely built into what my rate is. But, you know, people just sometimes, um, I hate to use the term educated fool, but I mean, sometimes people just know so much and then you don't, you really don't know anything because you are not willing to learn. You're not willing to say, you know what? There may be another way. Let me try this way. They rather just stay handcuffed in the mind as well. So, so Lashonda had, Lashonda had a great question. She said, is brand and mission the same thing? No, no, your, your mission is what you, what you stand for. It's who you are. It's what you want to, um, the direction that you feel you should go. And so for an example, your mission could be like what tech said, whenever you call, we show up. Um, your mission could be, um, it, it could be a whole statement, a mission statement. It could be a whole thing where to me, your brand um, is more of like, you know, your social media, your, your messaging, um, your colors, different things of that nature. That's just my opinion. And then the mission, um, is, you know, what you set out to do, what your company set out, sets out to accomplish. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I hear, did you guys hear that in the background? No. Yeah, I hear it. You do? Let me try to tone it down some. Um, sorry about the feedback. So I was thinking like um, the personal brand, see, like going outward, I'm thinking people will be attracted to you. Like they'll be attracted to tech. They'll be attracted to Dawn. They'll be attracted to me. They're not necessarily attracted to a company per se, mm -hmm. right? They'll buy products from that company. They'll buy services from that company, but they'll actually follow the actual person like a Elon Musk. No matter what Elon Musk uh, comes out with, he's going to bring a following with him. Uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Hart, if he comes out with something, um, people are going to follow his tequila or his movies. Same thing with Denzel Washington. So the personal brand... Uh, showing your personality and showing um, how you do things. It, it, it does take the handcuffs off you, and, but it also gives you the freedom to, I guess, show some vulnerability where your company will just show nothing but highlights. It's, it's, it's like an Instagram reel. It's just nothing but beautiful things when it, it comes to showing the company. But you can relate to the actual person, the CEO of the company. I, I, I think of Apple sometimes, like people purchase uh, Apple products a lot because of what Steve Jobs did. Mm -hmm. So um, the personal brand is really crucial. It's something that you could build over time. And it, let's just say you do decide to get out of the notary business and go into the real estate business. The people that were rocking with you in the notary business would be like, well, heck, I want to learn from you. I, you, you haven't steered me wrong yet. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let's rock and roll with that. So let's right. go into, um, well, I mean, just, just, to add, though, just, to, um, <clears throat> just to finish that up, if I can, yeah. you could, for notaries, right? Cause that's our primary audience here. Mm -hmm. You could take that same concept and apply that to the to your notary business right now. Granted, you do have a notary business, right? If that's in fact what you have, so you have clients, 
you have customers, and you have supporters. All right, you have clients, you have customers, and you have supporters. So what you were describing, Tiger, is a supporter, right? This person, this person purchases from you because of you, right? Mm -hmm. They like you as a person. It's not, listen, they can go to the UPS store. They really could. They don't have to go. They can go to the bank. Not everything, right? But if somebody's looking for a notary, if they looked hard enough, they could probably find it cheaper. They could probably find it a little bit less than what you charge, but the supporter, so a client, think about it this way. A client is somebody, or maybe put it this way, a, a customer rather. A customer is somebody, they're just looking for the cheapest price. Don't matter what, it, they're looking for furniture, they're looking for tires, looking for a hairdresser. They're just looking for the cheapest price. That's who they're going to go with. That's a customer. A client, that person, yeah, let's say you have an uh, intersection. And there's on both in it on two ends of the intersections, there's somebody got the tires for $99 for sets. That person, they got it for same price, $99 for sets, but they can't install the tires until later. I went to that business for the last five years, but the one time that they do me wrong, the one time that they inconvenience me, I'm ready to jump ship. And there's usually with the client. The, the the client relationship there's a, a beginning and there's an end there's a start point and there's an end point you've hired this person this contractor to come do work for you and then when they're done they're done but the supporter this is a this is what we should be striving to be building to be honest and you can do this very easily in a notary business you can build supporters i mean these are people who it don't matter if you raise your price. Tiger, how many people, how many times have you raised your price up and the person still went to you? All the time. See, that's a supporter. Don, how many times have you been late for an appointment and the person still booked appointments for the future? They became repeat clients, even if you were late or you kind of maybe you messed up on a signature. Mm -hmm. See, that's a supporter. That person, no matter what goes on with your notary business, whether you have an increase in your price. Maybe you screwed up on a signature. Maybe you were late, but that person, regardless, they still purchased from you and bought from you time after time after time because you could. That's that's what we should all be striving to build, and that's what that's when you start developing that real, real following. And the notary business is prime for that. Anybody can be a customer supporter. These person, these people can be lifelong clients. So you want to definitely differentiate those three. What I find as far as like supporters, because a lot of clients that we see um, don't need us repeatedly. They just need something handled for the day. It could be just, I just need this affidavit for my job. I just need this tattoo permission done for my child or something, you know. But when you do run across those ones, who you can turn into um, or who already are corporate clients. Um, when they come to you, this is a great example of what tech is talking about in terms of a supporter, because that corporate client will only use you. They will only, you're their notary. So when they need something, they need an apostille, whatever, they're going to call you and only you. So that's where you do have the opportunity to build relationships. You have to be able to read the room. So from the very phone call, the very first phone call that you get to determining what it is that they need. And if you find that it's someone who has something that's going to be kind of ongoing um, or multiples like estate documents or something along those lines, you definitely want to convert that person into like what tech is saying and make them a supporter. That's great answers. Great answers. Okay, so let's let's uh, go on to number two on what allows you to stand out in a competitive notary industry. So number two is networking. Networking is non-negotiable. Attend local business events. Uh, you actually do a lot of these events, uh, Dawn. Uh, join professional groups and collaborate with real estate agents, lawyers, and other professionals. Your network is your net worth. What say you, Tech? <laughs> uh, yeah. First of all, I don't I don't do any marketing whatsoever. I don't I do zero. I'm the zero marketing notary. I know that there are people out there who are like specialized in marketing. I'm the zero marketing notary. I do zero marketing. 
Well, damn, how do you do that? <laughs> Listen, if people are looking for notaries, guess what they're going to do? This is the behavior of the customers. They look for notaries, don't they? They go to other notaries. They're not going to necessarily message boards or they're not going to these ancillary type of events. You know, they're not going to go to a real estate convention or a housing and garden uh, symposium to look for a notary. <laughs> they're not. If a notary is looking for customers, then I will go to other notaries because that's where clients are going to. So if I'm looking for a a, a way to improve my network, then you got to go to other notaries and that's it. That's it. So a practical way that anybody could really do this is to call other notaries straight up. And at this point, the 100% way to do this, 100% never fail way, have some business to give to that notary. So you're essentially putting you, you're putting money into this person's pocket. <laughs> Let's try to say because you're tech. You put money. So this is never fail, right? I've got a deal that goes in for a proof of life form, one signature. I call another notary and I say, "Are you available to do this?" And then you're giving, you're putting, you're putting money into this person's pocket. You're helping them do accomplish something that they're trying to accomplish by helping them with their business, helping them with some income, and at the same time, you build a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. That's the only marketing that I'll ever do. That's the only type of outreach, cold outreach. Business cards, no, no, nah, none of that. I'll call a person and say, listen, I got $75 for you. You want it? And they're like, yes. Who are you? <laughs> are you Santa Claus? <laughs> like, yes, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Now, Don, you do a lot of uh, networking events out there in Florida. Uh, how important is it when you're for for notaries to network with other businesses, notaries, and such? Well, I don't do a lot. I I do like a couple of year um, that mm -hmm. that I will host, and then I don't really attend a lot either. Um, but um, I feel it's important. It's definitely important. Um, and for the reasons that, that tech said, um, initially when I started doing, um, classes, um, it was so I could get to know some of the notaries that are in my area and especially over near in my office area. And that is because, you know, my idea was to be able to do exactly what tech said and contact someone, right. And have them handle business that I wouldn't be available to handle. It turns out that um, because I started that in um, 21. And so now I only have just like a select few for my general area. Um, and we work very well together. Everything is cool. You know, we got bilingual, we, we got it all. So, I mean, definitely networking is important, but be careful about who you're networking with. And I really want to um, put a, hi a highlight on that because um, you'll see people on social media and when you meet those people, they're not who they appear to be or who um, the, the general audience or, or the general consensus is that they are. Um, so I think it's important, yes, to network, but be careful about who you attach yourself to. Oh, let's go. Okay. Uh, what 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 do you what are some red flags that people can look out for then? Hmm. Some red flags would be people who do a lot of talking, but you never see their work. You never actually see them doing notary assignments, or you never actually see them, you know, just in the field um, like the rest of us are. Um, I think a lot of um, another red flag would be if you if you see them in certain because, you know, you're vetting these people. Hopefully you're not just saying, hey, you know, I like her hair. Let me go ahead and network with her. So as you're looking at these different people, um, you're looking at 
Are they actually out in the field doing the work? Um, do they have like, are they continuing to educate themselves? Um, do they have mentors? Um, I think different things of this nature is, is very important. Um, and then if they're in proximity to you and you're able to connect with them before you put them in front of a client, go have a cup of coffee with them, invite her to brunch or him to brunch or whatever, and sit down and kind of see if their, um, idea, if their, their standard, their ethic is the same as yours and make sure that you guys click because like it was mentioned earlier today that, you know, when the person goes out, they're representing you. So if someone calls Notary Nation and they're asking for a notary and then I send them out and something goes wrong or they're dressed crazy or their language is crazy or whatever the situation is, they're not going to contact them. That's going to come back on me. So just be careful about um, where you decide to you know, get cozy. Tech, you wanted to add something to that? Yeah, those are good ones. Those are <clears throat> Yeah. Jesus Christ. Listen, <laughs> I thought this was going to turn to a Cat Williams interview. She was going to start naming names. Uh, I thought I, I, I could do that. I, I was instructed not to. I, I thought she was going to go Cat Williams on me, for real. <laughs> she was going to start the roasting. Yeah, I was going to say, turn up, turn up. <laughs> Steve Jobs, you know who that is. You mentioned him earlier. He said something very interesting. He said the quickest way to build a business or the most efficient, stable way to build a business is to be able to evaluate talent. You got to be a, a you got to be an evaluator of talent. You have to do it quickly. Right. You can't spend a lot of time with the wrong person and then later years down the road, find out that this is the wrong person. So the quicker you can evaluate somebody's the faster you can duplicate, replicate yourself, and the faster you can build, and the faster you can learn, too. So with notaries, fortunately, if you are a professional person, upstanding person, if that's what you say you are, right, mm -hmm. then you should be able to recognize that in people. So from the moment they pick up the phone, I can tell if this is somebody I'm going to work with. Instantly. Mm -hmm. I can instantly tell if this is somebody who I, I know I can work with this person. And here, so let's, for, so for example, in Tiger and Don, you probably run into this all the time. When you, I, and I, I, I've shown this on camera too. I'll say, I've got a one signature document in East or downtown. It pays $75. Are you available at 1215 to do it? Very specific. If they can't answer that question, that's not the person I want to work with. Or this person might present some problem they may present some hurdle, hurdles that i didn't expect and i maybe i don't i don't even want to deal with that mm -hmm. i have a vip client who's an executive assistant at a law firm or they're just a family downtown at the hospital and they need this power of attorney sign right now i need to know that you can go in there with confidence and execute mm -hmm. the organization without questions I don't need you to go in there talking and explaining things and breaking down alter statements and breaking down anything, anything. I don't need you to do all that. I need you to walk in there, stamp it, and go. Trademark that, Tiger. Because I've seen somebody try to use that, the, a, a variation of that. I'll show you that later on. But <laughs> the stamp and go. Can you execute this? This is what's going to... So if I, if I can evaluate that this person has a complete profile on Notary Cafe, it's not at 35%. They have a, a professional picture. This person, I'm not saying it has to be a headshot that's shot by the hottest photographer in Hollywood. I'm just saying it's not a selfie or something with you in a bottle. This is something that I will feel confident sending over to my grandmother's house so that you can execute this. And at the same time, you know how much you charge. So these things, this is how you can, you can quickly evaluate talent. So that way, when you get a call and you're on a boat somewhere in, you know, Turks and Caicos, but you got a notary assignment going through, you can say, all right, I can find you a notary 10 minutes, 15 minutes, three hours, whatever it is. Boom. This looks like a good choice. And uh, let me call them up. You can facilitate the deal. Boom. Keep it pushing. But then some people make it really complicated. And then they got to ask you all these questions. They got to interrogate you. And then they wonder why they can't get a deal. 
So you got to make it easy for yourself, you know, but it should be easier when you can see your personality in other people or people that won't give you complications. Right? The paralegal, Tiger, right? This guy ran off with mm -hmm. the money. That, that's an interesting story. I, I, I'd like you to tell that story when you're ready, bro. Yeah, I'll tell that story. <laughs> Just know if you're a paralegal, it, put it this way. All the product knowledge in the world means nothing if you can't sell. I'm going to just keep it at that. All these people are so smart, like Don was saying, just because you went to college and all this stuff. Just all the product knowledge, it means nothing if you don't know how to speak the language of business. Yeah, You can talk yourself out of business. This guy, this paralegal, he's going to be out of business in no time. As a matter of fact, he's trying to become a lawyer right now, so he's already out of business. But I should have, you know. That's my fault, though. <laughs> that's, my, that's all me. So we got we have two more uh, tips for you, and then we have a bonus power tip at the end. But before we go into the last three tips, we're going to take a word from our sponsor real quick. Opus Clip turns your long-form videos into short clips in one click. Opus Clip is powered by AI, and it can create 30 clips in 15 minutes and outperform any manual video editing by saving 90% of time and tons of money. Opus Clip is so hot right now, it's like trying to get tickets to a Beyonce concert. So get Opus Clip now. Don't be the person who hears about it later and goes, Dang, I should have listened to Tiger Tolia. Go ahead. Be the cool one in your squad. Try Opus Clip today for free. Just click the link in the description. How many people are... are uh... So we're going to go into number four. Educate and empower. Position yourself as the authority in notorial matters. Educate, educate your clients and community about the importance of notarization. Now, I could say that, I, you know, when I came out the gate, I started making videos about the notary um, stuff for my clients early, just in case they were trying to search, um, and, like maybe power of attorney, and then I can give them some type of knowledge on power of attorney. And then, you know, eventually I would get some phone calls on that and clients would come in and be like, oh, I saw your video on... And I really got that from law firms because I saw a lot of law firms uh, creating videos on this is what you do for a trust package. And this is what you do for a power of attorney. And I was like, heck, mm -hmm. if a law firm could do it, I, mm -hmm. I should be doing it too. So that definitely helped out clients. And I was able to, let's say if, if I was in a conversation with a client, I would tell the client, I'm going to send you a video explaining about power of attorney so you can actually uh, uh, have a better understanding of what you're getting into, what you need to look out for. And they would watch the video and that would help them out a lot. But Dawn, what would you say about that? So I like that you, um, you know, would give them videos and things of that nature. I I do educate my customers. Um, I do mostly apostilles. And um, so I have the opportunity to educate them just because it's not an everyday thing that people hear, even just, you know, the word. They don't even know how to say the word, you know. Um, so I use the opportunity once they're in my office to educate them on different things. So an example would be a person who comes in and, um, on the phone, they said they needed 10, right? Um, and then when they came to the office, they said, you know what? I only need five. I think I'm just going to do five. Then I'll take that as an opportunity to educate them on the reasons that they probably should go ahead and get what they initially said they needed. Um, sometimes people will think that it's just as simple as going to the Secretary of State and then they can get it done. So I'll take the time to educate them on why they should have a professional do it um, and how it's going to benefit them to go ahead and hire us to take care of it for them. So I use opportunities and I actually I enjoy it and I enjoy seeing the light bulb go off.
just like in my classes, when I teach my classes, you just, you see someone has caught on to something, they learned it, they're excited. I love that gives me a good feeling. Um, and so, yes, educating the client is very important. Um, just make sure that they're a client first before you start helping them or educating them because they'll take the what they learn from you, call someone else, and then start trying to speak like the authority. So just keep in mind <laughs> that um, you had to be selective on, you know, how you give out your jewels. Ooh, man, though, they, you you dropping a lot of teasers there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're dropping a lot of teasers. You, you're not really going into too much detail, but you're these are these are things that happen in the notary industry. Um, it, it's the raw truth. Now, come on, please elaborate on that because that is true. They'll take your information that you have. Uh, let's be honest. If if you are in first place and you are, you know, really in these streets, getting it cracking. I can guarantee you some of your phone calls that you're getting are from other notaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're there. And it, it's just part of the game. It's part of the game. Uh, they, they'll shop you and they will uh, try to find out what your formula is, how you're conducting phone calls, how you're brokering deals, how you're doing things like that. And then they will take it and run with it. Um, I got more comfortable with it uh, over time. Um, when I first came out and, you know, I, I wrote the book and stuff like that, it, it used to rub me the wrong way. But then again, I was like, well, you know what? My, my whole purpose was to help people anyway. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's just when they co-op <laughs> um, and, and act like it was theirs and then they'll, you know, create a whole product and system around it that's when it got a little bit shady and i was like mm -hmm. come on like, mm -hmm. you know you didn't do that yeah yeah that's not cool yeah that's so cool. it's i know tech is on the phone right now so let's go into uh number five customer service is your weapon exceptional customer service is your secret weapon treat every client like they're your only client be responsive, friendly, and go the extra mile. What say you, Dawn? I love this. Customer service, um, I don't think people understand just how important customer service is. And as a business owner, a lot of things that I try to do is put myself in the position of the consumer. When I go somewhere, do I like it when they greet me? Do I like it when they give me a few minutes and then come over to me and say, hey, how can I help? Do I like it when I look up and because I have a question and they're not too far away from me so they can help me? Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's about the experience. You know, every single thing that I go out for, it's about the experience. So I try to be sure that the experience that they have with us is as professional and as seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. um, if I can't get back to someone uh, on the phone, I'll shoot them over an email. Um, I set the expectation with the client on exactly, okay, from this point, what you can expect until we close out your, your case with us. Um, setting the expectation, um, being upfront and honest, um, over-delivering. Over-delivering is very important. So if I tell someone, that like for an example, I have have two, and I'll be going back to the sec. I just left from the Secretary of State last week, but I have to go back again this week. Um, the lady is expecting her documents on Monday or Tuesday of next week. She'll they'll be ready for pickup on Friday, so she can pick them up either from myself or from my receptionist, which I have a cold, so it's probably going to be from him. So I have to go to my son's game tonight. So anyway, um, you, putting different things in place to make them have a good experience whenever they're dealing with you and your company. Phone calls, um, text messages, emails, all of those things really matter. They continue to hear from you as you're going through the process. Now, if it's for a notary, um, sorry, a notarization where they're not going to have to um, have several interactions with you and it's just going to be the one, then you want to make sure that that one interaction they have with you is exquisite. So they, you may not have an office. A lot of people don't have an office. They're mobile notaries. 
Well, if they go to meet you at Starbucks, you can offer to buy them a latte or whatever the case is, just to, you know, kind of break the ice, make them relax, um, get whatever it is that they need done, get it done pretty quickly and efficiently. So they're on about their way. Nobody wants to sit with you for 30 minutes. Um, like Tech was mentioning earlier, you know, get in and get out. We, I try to make us, if, if we're doing like a power of attorney, we have to go to an assisted living facility, which most of them come from, um, or a hospital, then I say, okay, from the time you get your parking situated, because it's going to be all different types of scenarios with the parking lot of the hospital, um, time yourself. From the time you walk in, you should, 15 minutes max. Because as soon as you walk in, you should be about your business so you can get out of the good people's way, right? Mm -hmm. The good people are experiencing something that is very serious in their lives and you don't, you want your experience or your encounter with them to be like, they don't even remember it. They know they got it done, but they don't even remember it. Here are the papers they've been notarized and they don't give you a second thought. So the best way to do that, be professional, get in and out. So, I mean, it, it's a lot, but but the main thing is being consistent and being creating an environment for a really good experience. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. Um, I think I think one of my superpowers is in the customer service department, uh, just because like I'm I'm gonna treat you like my favorite nana. Mm -hmm. I'm going to treat you like a family member. I'm going to give you undivided attention. I'm not going to have a bunch of things going on around me. So if you call me, just know that like I am I am all ears. Mm -hmm. All ears. And um being able to really attentively listen to the customer and their concerns and yeah. what they need and being able to offer solutions to their problems or even offering solutions to problems they didn't even know they will have in the future <laughs> yeah. is is like huge because even I don't know um I'm sure this happens to you all the time Dawn but like for me I have so many repeat customers they're like look you are my go-to now Anybody that um, rocks with me, they know that I do not answer my calls like it's me. Uh, it's always a guy named Mark that's answering the phone call. So when a client calls and says, I want the person that came to my house last time, uh, his name was Villard, right? I know that I gave these people the primo stimo service that I could possibly give them. Um, I'm going to have a couple of laughs with them. Now, you guys' approach might be a little bit different because you'll be like 15 minutes in and out. Sometimes I'll be, I'll be kicking it. I'm like, yo, you got coffee. Like, what's going on, man? <laughs> you know why I'm like that, though, too? What got me on that? I got uh -huh. on that bandwagon trying to see what it would break down by the hour. To see, okay. if could, you know, to consolidate, okay, the time, the drive there, the time with them, and the drive back to see yeah. what that would break down for an hour. So it almost became like a little contest. Like, yes. you know, get in there, do what you need to do, make sure that notary journal is complete and get back to your car. Boom, what, what time? what's your time? Yeah, I used to <laughs> you know, do that it too. It became like a little thing to do. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I literally did that too. And I was I was actually in a competition with my brother. Um, he was like, yeah, I just made this in a short period of time. And I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna beat that time, right? And um. <laughs> And then I, I noticed like, all right, it's, it is about the time, but it's about building that relationship and that rapport. And, um, I, and then also what I would do is I would run intelligence while I'm in their most intimate setting. Mm -hmm. So since I'm in your house, right. <laughs> where not a lot of people get to go yeah. since I'm already in your house, I'm going to look around see what kind of pictures you have i'm gonna i'm i'm not creepy with it right <laughs> i'm not i'm not lifting pictures up and shouldn't like <laughs> hey who's that lady i'm not doing none of that none of that crazy stuff but i am <clears throat> doing some recon <laughs> don't cry <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> who sleeps in this room 
No, I'm not doing shit like that. <laughs> oh boy. But but I am running in recon. I'm running intelligence in the house because what I'm looking for is patterns. Mm -hmm. Um the, I'm looking to see if I am attracting a certain type of clientele. I'll give you an example. Um, I remember do, doing a series of notaries uh, one month. And in those notaries, those notary assignments, at least like out of 10 of them, there was about three or four people that had Harley Davidson uh, motorcycles. And I was like, mm -hmm. I wonder if I'm like, my marketing is attracting uh, bikers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I noticed was uh, for those that have pets, there was there's a company called Chewy, and um, some of the clients that I was getting all had big boxes of Chewy, either outside on their porch or inside of their house. And I was like, okay, so that means uh, I have a a clientele of pet, you know, people that love pets. But not only that, I researched Chewy and found out that Chewy has a very similar business model as I do. So p these people are looking for convenience on many different levels. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what like if you're in their home, take a look. They, they might belong to a sorority. This guy might belong to a fraternity. You're in their most intimate setting um, of their lives. So, you know, take a look around. Don't be creepy about it, though. Uh, tech? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I take that advice all the time. That's great advice. Uh, I'll tell you one quick story. When I went mm -hmm. to go do an I-9 verification one time, this lady was a, an employee, a remote employee for Nike. And as you all know, Nike's headquartered up in Oregon, and I'm in California. So this woman, when I walked in, First of all, I noticed that there was um, a Subaru, a, the Subaru car parked outside. And uh, I grew up in California and I lived in Texas. And I live in Colorado. When I lived in Colorado, I know I noticed everybody drove Subarus, mountain people, outdoors people. Right? I, they all dog owners, like you were saying. So when I walked, so I noticed these things. Works for Nike. Nike's in Oregon. Oregon's outdoors lives here, drives Subaru, I walk in the house, I wonder what I'm gonna see, I wonder. So I walk into the house and sure enough, she's got like sweaters everywhere, beanies and outdoor gears, like tents, outdoor equipment, bags and stuff like that. Must be an outdoors person. So as I'm leaving the place, as I'm, you know, as I'm walking out, I'm thinking to myself, how can I appeal to her so that next time she needs a notary, because she probably will, that she'll think of me. So I say, um, seems like, you know, as I walk out, I was like, seems like, you know, you're going to be going uh, skiing pretty soon. She's like, oh, how'd you know? Because eh, you got all the equipment out there. Next time you need a notary, you know who to call. Like, I didn't say anything about, I just asked her, hey, it seems like you're going to be going skiing pretty soon, right? Or uh, you're gearing up for a ski trip. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said, cool. And I actually left it at that. That like, yes or yes or no? Yes. And then I said, next time you need a notary, you'll know who to call. Hmm. All right, so she hasn't called me yet, but I'm saying like those type of things. Uh, <laughs> I don't. She may not have needed notary. I don't know, but uh, those type of things are, are very good. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah, indeed. So uh, before we go into the bonus, uh, we're gonna do uh, a new segment called the book review. So we're gonna do the book of the week, uh, and today's book of the week is da -da -da -da, Thumbtack for Notary. Wow. The link is in the description. Um, you know, uh, I would love to have the author on here. And luckily, I do have the author of <laughs> Thumbtack for Notaries on this segment. Heck, you mind talking about this book, brother? Oh, yeah. Thumbtack for Notaries is a, is, it's a handbook. It's a, it's a manuscript. And for people who don't know what Thumbtack is, Thumbtack is a pay per lead service. And when I first found out about Thumbtack, all I read was negative uh, press about it um, from the notary perspective. So, but me knowing that that can't be the whole, that can't be the whole story. So there's some reason why this thing exists. 
and it's done so well. So I just did some further digging and I realized that for people who are looking for clients and notaries are always looking for clients, Thumbtack is the second best source for uh, prospects and for leads. So I, I, you know, I dive deep into it and I figure out, well, what is it that makes Thumbtack so uh, viable as an option for, for clients? And the number one thing that I find out is that people who are looking for notaries, the, the type of person who's looking for a notary that doesn't go to Google, but they go to Thumbtack, that person behaves differently. That person is what we were talking about earlier, the client, mm -hmm. the customer, the supporter, the difference between the two. The person who goes to Thumbtack is a supporter. That person yeah. is looking for something to get done right now. So it's a manuscript. It's a template to tell, teach you how to use Thumbtack. Um, People are get they get a little bit tense, apprehensive about it because you have to pay for it in advance. But don't worry about that. I'll walk you through how to navigate that whole minefield. Yeah, I um I I wanted to add that segment into the show because I I, I know for myself when um when someone recommends a really good book, I go out and buy it. Like I'm either gonna most likely buy it off of Audible first because I'm just an audio person like that. But um, when when people make recommendations for books, I go out there and get it. Um, so we're going to be doing more book of the week. I know Dawn, you have a book coming out real soon, correct? What's the the what's, ebook oh, is out. Her? All right, uh, yeah. talk about that real quick. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, so it's um, Apostilles One Hundred One. Um, okay. essential skills for notaries. Um, and basically it is just a introductory to Apostille's facilitating. Um, it gives you, of course, some tips and tricks and it removes that, you know, shroud of mystery over Apostille facilitating. So yeah, definitely the link is in my bio on Instagram. My Instagram is at one notary nation. Um, and check it out. It's an uh, ebook download, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Oh, that, that's going to have to be a book of the week. We're going to have to pull that up on the book of the week. Cool. Um, right before, and, and before we get into the bonus, you guys, before we get into the bonus one, um, I got to let you guys know next week's show is going to be crazy. This is what the show is going to be about. Cheap notary mm. versus not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> That, you need some fire emojis up there on that one. God. Yeah, we, we, we're we're gonna we're gonna go heavy on this one um, because there's a misconception out there where a lot of notaries feel like they need to be the cheapest in the industry, and they feel like they can get more assignments. So we're we're gonna go in deep next week Wednesday, um, twelve thirty Eastern Standard Time. What is that? Uh, Nine thirty your time, uh, Tech Pacific. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, tune in next week Wednesday for cheap notary versus not cheap notary. Okay, so let's go right into the bonus here. The bonus material: get a mentor. In a market flooded with notaries, those who actively seek mentorship gain a significant edge. The power of mentorship lie in its ability to fast track your learning, expand networks, boost confidence, and provide invaluable business insight. I could tell you right now, um, I wouldn't have been where I, where I started if it wasn't for Andre Hatchett uh, mentoring me in the notary business. That was serious for me. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would have probably been bouncing my head on the wall all, all day, mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure this industry because when you really dive into this industry, this industry is huge. Now there's, I, I, I used to look at the notary business as it was just local, but it's, it's national, it's global. There, you, you could specialize in a past deal. You could specialize in I nine, you can specialize in trust packages. You can specialize in loan signing. There's so much that you can do in the notary industry. You can get swallowed up. Mm -hmm. So having a mentor really, uh, really saved me, man. And you know, then what happened was, uh, 
Andre opened up his network to me. Then he was he invited me onto his platform. And now I get to speak to other notaries and tell them my experience. And that's what I try to do with the notary war room. I try to kind of carry on that legacy, what he he uh laid down to be able to do it. So a mentor is incredibly important in my eyes. What what would you say about that, Dawn? I agree a hundred percent. I agree 100%. You can't do everything on your own. You can't think of everything on, you don't even know what you don't know. Mm. And mm. if you invest in yourself and you spend time, whether it's weekly, whether it's a couple times a month, whatever it is, you definitely should do yourself the favor, do your business the favor of nurturing it by getting different nuggets, being watered, being shown the way, set out into the sun. These are all the kinds of things that a mentor will do to help you grow. Um, so yeah, mentorship is something that I strongly believe in. What about you? Yeah, let me teach you guys something, bro. listen up. Let me teach you guys something here. <clears throat> That man that you're listening to right now, Tiger Toledo, has personally mentored me. If you guys want to go somewhere, you need to find somebody who's going there and you need to follow them. That simple. Uh, Tiger Toledo, he talked about Andre Hatchet. I talk about Tiger Toledo. Now, if you are intentionally going out there and saying, I want to find me a mentor, I'm gonna, I didn't find that person. You know, you might find it a little bit more challenging. This stuff has to organically happen. It has to naturally mm -hmm. happen. And yeah. when you find a person, you'll know, you'll know, find that person who's going, who has something that you don't have or who exhibits some personality or some characteristic or they have some status that you have or you're seeking and then go after it. So just to add to, um, as far as Tiger T goes, yeah, for sure, you know, Tiger is one of my mentors. And like Tech just said, it has to be organic. And the way that that I was able to just be so blessed to men to mix in with, with Tiger and just connect with him the way that I have, um, it's been over a couple of years now that we have been, you know, yeah. just kind of rocking out and he is a thorough. So you definitely want to get someone who is where you want to be. Um, I have taught a class um, in Andre's um, school and I have spoken with Andre, you know, a few times, you know, throughout the years, um, but I'm closer to Tiger and I kind of pattern a lot of the things that I do behind Tiger because that's just, now I didn't start off with him. So think about this. It's okay for you to start one place so that this mentor can get you to this level. Mm -hmm. And then it is okay to grab on to another mentor who can get you to the next level. I feel like mentorship is something that just, it should just always be there, but it should definitely be with someone who is where you're trying to be, that your personalities gel well. And I mean, Tiger mm -hmm. is like my brother. So, I mean, it gels extremely well. Yeah, thank you, thank you guys. Um, yeah, we're we're all family here. Um, you know, I I want to I want to drop this one thing before we uh, jump off. Um, if you guys, you know, usually I do this for uh, private Zoom meetings, like when we're doing, um, you know, like maybe an event bright type of thing. And I was thinking we we got to we all got to do a challenge too for for. Uh, our peoples. But I was thinking, uh, if you guys would like to network while you're on this live right now, and you're not afraid of putting your name, phone number, and um, what state that you're in, I can guarantee you that it, it's going to help you out a lot. Because let, let me let me do a pre-frame for you on this. Dawn is in Florida. Tech is in California. I'm in Chicago. If a client calls me, I'm talking about a corporate client, calls me and says that they want to get a notarization in Chicago, I can 
comfortably tell them that we also have notaries in Florida, California, New Jersey, uh, Virginia. My girl Tahish is out there. Um, I can I can confidently tell them that we are a nationwide outfit. So for you guys that are actually listening to uh, Professor Up right now, if you want to put your information in the comment section and network with your fellow notary. It makes your company look much larger. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very appealing because a lot of these companies, uh, real estate, uh, law firms, they don't want to be calling a bunch of notaries looking for notaries. They want to go to person. Hey, Tech, do you have a notary out there in Chicago? Why, yes, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Don, do you have anybody in New Jersey? Yes, I do. You become that go-to person. And that is one of the key ways of being able to stand out in the competitive notary industry. Any final words, you guys? Uh, tech, uh, well, let's start with you, Don. Do you have any final words? Final words. Uh, make sure you join us again next Wednesday. Um, that is going to be very, very important, very fun, I think, um, per usual. Um, I have a class coming up for Apostilles, a three-day class that's starting on the 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. The link is in my Instagram bio for that. So if that's something that you've been considering, we're at the start of the year. Now is a great time to get on board so you can offer that service for the rest of this year. Um, and of course, uh, my ebook is up as well. The link is in my bio for that. And be on the lookout for a more in-depth and comprehensive book from me uh, regarding Apostilles. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Have in the description as well. Thank you. Uh, Tech, any final words, brother? Yeah, yeah. You, listen, you got to get yourself a mentor. You got to um, improve your communication. Yeah. And Develop a price. Get yourself a mentor. Improve your communication because a lot of us aren't taught that. That's something that you know we, a lot of us kind of struggle with communication and and being bad communicators and being effective communicators. Develop that, and then that's going to help in turn how you negotiate, how you sell, how you persuade, and that's going to help you in turn with your business. Okay, so that's when you come up with a price. So that way. When you go out there and people are asking you, hey, how much do you charge? You don't um and um and um and you not have question marks all over your head. So get yourself a mentor. Follow somebody who's headed to the top. Follow that person. All right. And if you really want to accelerate that, pay that person. All right. If you really want to speed it up, pay that person. And then you'll get much more out of it in return. You, you will. Unquestionably, right? Go quickly. Go, this shouldn't take all year long to do this. All right. Just, you should implement these things fast and and like Steve Jobs saying evaluate the talent quick and move on <laughs> right you don't want to be stuck in the same place that you were three years ago with your notary commission Just get moving y'all otherwise get out the industry and find something else because this is not a, a difficult industry it is very straightforward very simple I just booked an appointment for a power of attorney that you know you know, for lack of better words, it's probably more than most people get for power of attorneys. Let's just say that. And I did it while I was on the computer during the <laughs> while we were talking, right? So this is it's a very straightforward process, but um, you know, make the decision, decide what it is that you want, go after it. Wonderful. And if you guys got value from this video, all I ask is that you share it with a fellow notary friend, colleague, somebody that's even considering becoming a notary. Share this information for them so they don't make the the dreadful mistakes of a lot of notaries out there uh, trying to bump their head against the wall, scrambling and, you know, trying to figure this out and be like, man, I've been a notary for three years and I never made a dime. So this this is the purpose of this show here. Uh, profits are up because our main goal is to try to it is to give you sound advice so you can actually raise the bar and make more money so you can have more freedom to do what you want to do. With that being said, peace, love, and happiness. I wish you guys the very best. Thank you, uh, Tech. Thank you, Dawn, for being on the show. And I will see you guys next week. You heard?
can't hurt. <laughs>